first permanent settler in Chicago was a black man named Jean Baptiste Pointe do Sabo. He may have been born in the islands of Haiti around 1745 to a French mariner and a mother who was a slave of African descent. The Sabo was educated in France and then in the early 1770s sailed to New Orleans. From there, he made his way up the Mississippi River to Porio, Illinois, where he married a Potawatomi woman named Catherine in the tribal ceremony. The couple had two children, Jean Baptiste Pointe de Sabo Jr. and Suzanne. The marriage was later formally recognized by a Catholic priest in Chacohekia, Illinois, in 1778. The Sabo settled along the northern bank of the Chicago River near Lake Michigan and developed a prosperous trading post and farm. His cabin is often depicted as the modest structure, but written descriptions of the property suggest that Dusabo may have lived more than a modest life. According to original manuscripts documenting the sale of Dusabo's property, the cabin was spacious, boasting a roomy saloon with five rooms off each corner. The property featured a large stone fireplace, bake and smoke houses, stable and huts for employees along with a fenced garden and orchard. Household finishings included paintings, mirrors, and walnut furniture. At his trading post, the Sabo served Native Americans, British, and the French explorers. He spoke Spanish, French, English, and several native languages all fluently, which served him well as an entrepreneur and mediator. The Sabo sold his estate on May the 7th. 1800 and returned to Paria, Illinois. He later moved to St. Charles, Missouri, where he died on August the 28th, 1818. John Baptiste Pointe do Sabo, a frontier trader, trapper, and former general regarded as the first resident of what is now Chicago, Illinois. But much as he founded Chicago, very little effort has been put in place to recognize his presence. There are three videos, one of Roren Burnett, an author and a noted historian exposing Chicago's best kept secrets. Another one is Dr. Christopher Reed, a recognized authority on Chicago's African-American history, talking about the Sabo's French and entrepreneurial influence, and one of Margaret Burroughs reading her essay on the world frontier in which the Sabo lived. These videos communicate too much. That can tell a lot. Please take a look at them and then come down in the comment section and let me know what you think. Du Sabo um, was very much in the French influence and brought European ideas of commerce into the area. He traded with the Indians for fur. He um, sold bakery goods and other finished items to the Native Americans. He became part of the environment here in Chicago, and he took a wife from among the Potawatomi people. The Potawatomi were one of several groups who lived here in the um, this area of marsh and woodlands. His uh, interest in their culture and their way of life coincided with his interest in developing the economics of the area for the French Frank Franco interests. He wanted to become a sub-chieftain within the ranks of the um, Potawatomi political leadership. Now, he didn't get this chieftainship, and uh, that's probably one reason he decided to leave in 1800. The other reason he would have uh, decided on leaving this area, even though he was doing well economically, was that he learned that the Americans were coming. The Americans signed a treaty in 1795 in northwestern Ohio near Toledo, the Treaty of Greenville. And the Potawatomi, the Miami, the Fox, and other Ojibwa and other Indian groups gave up their rights to what we call Chicago. 
within eight years of the signing of the treaty, there were U.S. troops building a fort near uh, the uh, Tribune Tower. By 1804, Fort Dearborn had been completed. Had DuSable remained, he would have been a, um, an obstacle to American domination in this area. And I can't imagine how Americans would have reacted to a man of color being so prominent and so dynamic in, in, in their midst. There's not a single street in the city of Chicago named in honor of the black man who founded this city. Not an alley. Not an alley. And the funny thing about it, and we can go into it, is that the man, Dusable built the first house here. He opened the first trading post here. Uh, he, he created the foundations for what we know as Chicago. But John Kenzie, does everybody know this story? John Kenzie, a white man, came after Dusable. And when Dusable was forced out or pushed out or whatever, he ended up with Dusable's property. And Kenzie has a bridge. <laughs> Kenzie has a street. Kenzie has a building. And all he did was buy <laughs> Dusable's house. S. Chicago is said to be the sound that one makes when one sneezes. That's Chicago. And that was how Chicago got its name, I understand. And that was because the banks of the Chicago River was a damp, flat, odorous place that was favorable to the growth of wild onions and garlic. And in the hot weather, these would rot and create a great stench. And when this odor reached people's noses, it causes them to sneeze. That's the sound. That's Chicago. Thus it was that the Indians called the place Chicago the place of wild onions or garlic. Many travelers and visitors passed the area but were not impressed enough to settle permanently. Even the Indians preferred to live farther south. But one day, Jean Baptiste Point du Sable, a gentleman of African ancestry, stayed. He had a sharp eye and he recognized the place as, as a strategic location and as a crossroads of travel and trade with its ready access to a wealth of raw material. But he was the first man, black, red, or white, to see the commercial possibilities of the place and to voice the city's motto of I will. He was the first to give meaning to Carl Sandberg's poem, The City of the Big Shoulders. On the north branch of the Chicago River, somewhere between the Tribune Tower and the Merchandise Mart, DuSable built the first permanent home in Chicago. He started from scratch with nothing working for him but hope and faith, and he made Chicago a commercial center. He was Chicago's first builder, he was Chicago's first wholesaler, first meat packer, and first merchant prince. Indeed, DuSable was the first Chicagoan, in fact, and a man worthy of the deed. My name is Osi the Bone Child. I'll be waiting for you in the comment section with what Chicago has to hold in secrecy.